two core uh, entrepreneurs, startups from uh, Silicon Valley, uh, who are extremely connected and uh, same their usual suspects at the web. We love to have them. Tony Conrad and Kevin Rose, they always have news and new things they're working on. Tony and Kevin. You're supposed to dance as Oik. you, right? <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hello, sir. Hello. I think it's the first time I shake your hand, Kevin. What's that? We hug in Silicon Valley, right? Oh, that's, that's right. That's how we do things. We're huggers. I know. That's because you're in Paris, suddenly you shake hands. I'm still getting used to that. The, the kiss thing is new for me as well. <laughs> I, with girls? No, I'm just, yeah, apparently, you, I saw you the other night. You were doing it with everyone, so. I don't know if that was the wine or... I, the, French love, the French love to kiss a lot. That's great. Are you two or three? What no, but I'm do? saying this is, is true, right? I mean, it helped me because, like, if you go to see... Kind of, I know why we started this, but, <laughs> you know, when you say hi to, like, women, they are far. You know, it's, like, it's, like, it's like almost like you smell or something. It, unless well, you know someone well, then it's like a good hug. Right, yeah. like, like your wife. But here, it's like you, we kiss, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, you just launched a new or a bunch of new apps. Yeah. I wait, 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 wait. So you were at Google last time you came. It's sure. difficult to follow, huh? <clears throat> yeah. So I mean, I spent the last gosh, it's almost been three years at Google now. So, ventures. As yeah, a ventures. VC. That's right. So you I were started off at Google Plus. Um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time there. I, I bounced over to Google Ventures. Um, started doing investments here about uh, a little over two and a half years ago. And then now I'm still a, a part-time VC there, and then also entrepreneur now. So I jump back in. I'm starting some new projects. Um, I launched a couple of them. You could, one, you could not help? Could well, not help it? I mean, it's just one of those things where when you're a VC, it's, it's a lot of fun because you get to meet all these entrepreneurs, and you hear about all these wonderful ideas all day long. But at the end of the day, you're kind of just sitting on the sidelines giving advice. You're not actually you know, in the game having fun. And so. <clears throat> I've always been kind of a builder at heart, and so I, uh, I wanted to get back out there and just build something. And what did you build then? Uh, a couple apps. One is called Tiny, which is a, a small little way to share these looping videos. Um, and then another one, which is called Watchville, which is kind of targeting the more high-end luxury uh, watch market. Completely different apps. Completely so different. Let, let's t and, uh, and what's the name of your, do you call it an incubator? North. Yorf? Yeah. North. North. Yeah. So the first, the first app, what is, what is it? Uh, so the first app, uh, Tiny, is basically, it's one of the things that we noticed, I guess the, the problem that we discovered initially is that in order to share something, um, a piece of media online, it's, uh, it's oftentimes a, a pretty multi-step process where you have to go and you have to, let's say you're using Instagram, you take a photo, you make sure you look right, you apply a filter, you, you know, there's a... 10 or, about 10 or so different steps from social sharing to giving it a title to tagging it to you name it. Um, it's just a lot of heavy lifting. So for us, we were like, can we create something that is really small in nature that is just takes out a lot of the anxiety around posting something? So we created these little thumbnail size images that just loop over and over um, that help you capture those little moments that normally just are fleeting and slip away. And so. Um, we created that along with a way to do threaded replies. And so we have people, you know, showing a picture of their dog doing a trick. And then we had, you know, 50 other people showing off their dogs also doing a similar trick. And so these groups of communities, like ad hoc communities, are coming together to create really interesting kind of fun content. And so it was, um, you know, it was just something that we launched. It took us uh, about three weeks to build. And that's our whole model. Our, honestly, our, our model is not that we have the one silver bullet that we know that this is going to be the next major thing. You don't. We don't. I mean, no one does. And so we, we just want to give us, uh, we, we you know, went out and raised a little bit of cash, and then we wanted to go and, and try as many different kind of and, crazy ideas as possible. And you're pretty cool about it, right? Because you are uh, very generally a different culture here to there where, like, you, you don't dare to fail, right? And you don't care. You're just saying, I don't know if it's going to work or you not. You have to fail. And you have, you have to fail. I mean, half of, if not more, of the, the great startups that we consider to be, you know, the Instagrams or Twitter or you name it, they didn't start as those companies. Twitter was obvious. Uh, obvious, and they were doing that, that blogging, or um, the um, It was podcasting, podcasting, yeah. Uh, before. And Instagram like was what? Audio, that's right. And audio, then, yeah, obvious is now. And uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, <laughs> Instagram is, was what? Bourbon before that, which was like a check-in service similar to Foursquare. 
And there's right. and the photos were just like a, a small piece of that. That's right. If you talk to Kevin, that's what was working. That's right. right? And then he found that and then he pulled the that signal out. And the noise. It's great. And before we go to Tony, the watch, <coughs> so that has nothing to do with the first one. You're selling watches now. I'm not selling watches. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, honestly, I saw an underserved community. This is something I think that's really interesting is this kind of untouched long tail of content. <coughs> and this was uh, a community that is very passionate, very engaged. Um, has a pretty high disposable income, and they just need something to all collect around, like a community. Uh, so I created an aggregator of all the top watch blog news out there, along with uh, uh, time-setting tools like for per per perpetual calendars or moon phase complications or things of that nature, atomic time, and ETC. People chat in it, comment? Uh, not yet, but right now it's just kind of like the best of the content <clears throat> world and then also the best tools out there. And that, again, another very small project took us a few weeks to build, and we launched it, and it's been just blowing up for us. It, and it's because you have a passion with watches, right? It's, it's, it's a personal passion. Um, you know, I got hooked when, uh, it's a horrible story, I'll let you talk in a second, I feel like I'm hogging <laughs> the whole thing. But when my, my father passed away, he left me with a, a timepiece, and I started getting into it and like understanding <laughs> more about horology and about the, actually the craftsmanship that goes into it, and I kind of got hooked from there. But I think it's amazing what he's doing. I mean, he's taking a lot of shots on goal really quickly, right? Your team's, what, four or five people? Five people. You've already put two apps out that are world-class apps that are available in the, you know, the, the, I, you know, the app store. Um, what, you know, what, I think that's amazing that you can do that so quickly with such little resources. You know, that's a big change. With right? very little resources, right? That's yeah. right. You I have mean, five people, so it costs, what, a few hundred thousand with two apps combined? What's that, as far as... Or how much did it cost you to do? Oh, less than that. Less. Yeah, so, you know, we have... Uh, I don't know, I thought the engineers in Silicon Valley were, like, crazy expensive. Well, they, they're expensive, but things are a lot faster now. Like, Caleb, uh, our main engineer, he's, uh, he's a master at Swift now. So most of our stuff is written in Swift. It's a lot quicker to kind of get it up and running and off the ground, and that saves us a lot of time. So it's just leveraging a lot of those Can technologies. Can you explain for those who don't know what <laughs> Swift is? Uh, yeah, it's just the, the new programming language that Apple announced to replace Objective-C or to be a companion to Objective-C. And, um, you know, to do a lot of things, some very basic things, it just takes out a lot of time, and we were able to get to market much faster by, by using some of that and, and embracing it, so. And you're all Apple. <clears throat> uh, actually, we're working on Android now. I've got one uh, developer that does both uh, iOS, Android, and backend, and he is kind of our Swiss Army knife, and so we should have Android out in the next few weeks. Awesome. Tony, okay. still on about.me? <laughs> still doing about.me, so the same. So you have the same, you, you guys are interesting because you, you, you are slash were a VC, and you came back entrepreneur as well? Well, I've always, I've always parallel tracked kind of both. Um, so I've always found it a huge advantage to be an active founder while I'm investing, right? Because you're in just different flow. Um, you, you know, anybody who thinks that all the VCs and the entrepreneurs and founders go to the same parties and events, you know, that's not the way it really works in the Valley. There's a lot of intersection, but, you know, founder circles are, are very discreet and different. And so, you know, by being an active founder, I've just had access to deal flow that's a lot different um, than maybe I would have if I oh, weren't. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so that's been super helpful. And I think, you know, you know some of the companies that we've invested in where we're the first check, like MakerBot and Fitbit and WordPress and some fairly large businesses. First check in right? WordPress, yeah. Fitbit and what? Very first check in WordPress. MakerBot. Oh, uh, MakerBot, Fitbit, wow. You know, Brightroll, um, Puppet. Uh, you know, so why do you on. why do you work? You don't need to work. <laughs> why do I work? Because I yeah, I think I think you know for me I don't think I'd be a very successful venture capitalist if I weren't an active founder, um, and I think also by being a venture capitalist it actually has served me really well in the way that I've kind of crafted and built my own company or companies now. Um, because you know what people say they say if you're a serial <coughs> entrepreneur and you make, you make some money, then you become a VC. That's, that happens, right? That happens a lot. And they, they, like, uh, often other VCs actually tell you you can never go back, right? <laughs> it's, it's, because it's a great lifestyle. Because it's a great lifestyle. I right, mean, you a, just watch others working. Because like, you're watching others work, that's right. No, no. You play golf and... Listen, the best venture capitalists out there, you know, the Brad Felds of the world and the John Callahans and uh, Fred Wilson and whatnot, these guys, they work incredibly hard, no. right? So I don't want to paint a picture that they don't, they don't have to work. They do. 
But I think um, for both Kevin and I, I think you know, part of what we share is we love building things, right? We love being part of that kind of founder ethos. And so um, for me, I've figured out how to take the venture aspects of my life and make them work to an advantage for the company that you know, I'm running, in this case, about.me. So when you work with founders like Ahit and Shaw, who knows things about conversion metrics and virality and, you know, and, and analytics and data, like by being a part of that company and being at the board level, you learn a lot, right? I learn a lot by being around Kevin. I learn a lot by being around Philip Rosedale or you know, Matt Mullenweg. And so you apply those, the best of what you take, you apply that to the way that you're crafting and building your own company. So I've always found it to be a huge advantage. Um, I'm really curious, though. You're an interesting entrepreneur in that you sold your last company, About.me, to AOL. Very successful exit. How much did you sell it for? Oh, I can't remember. It was like million. $30, $40 $30, $40 million? Something. I Come on. Remember. So then he takes it back from AOL and is running it now again. Like, why did you, why did you take that back out and have to go back in to... You know, I have to say, you know, when, when we sold About.me, it was um, about four months after we had started working on it. So it was incredibly premature. Um, and, uh, but you saw a big check coming. You're like, why not? <laughs> yeah, it was, it, there's definitely a part of that. All um, in cash. But I have, to, I have to be honest. You know, like when it happened, I, I, you know, I wasn't ready to sell the company. I, I was, we hadn't even started, right, down that journey of building the product. But it was a lot of money, and I'm not the only person who was involved. I had luckily made money elsewhere, so the money wasn't the primary driver for me. But I had a team of people who never had been experienced So that. they made their first million. And exactly. And so there's a responsibility as a founder and as a CEO and as a partner to people. I love it. That you have to take There's a responsibility of a founder to make your employees make their first millions. Love it. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And so I took that seriously. And, but I remember when, when, we, when we saw, you know, it really, it crushed me. It really honestly crushed me. So I then think. you bought it back. When I bought it back. I... It's so cool. Can you teach me how to do this? So you, you sell, <laughs> then you buy back. Uh, there's another, uh, actually, uh, European, I mean, from your couple uh, who, who did this, this with, uh, with Bebo, with uh, the Birches, Michael right. Birch. Yeah. And Doshi, they, uh, they sold Bebo to, was it AOL? AOL, yes. Right. AOL is such a great buyer, $800 million, I think, if I remember well. <laughs> well there's they, they, there's Skype. Back. Let's come on, let's think about it. There's Skype, there's StumbleUpon, there's About.me, there's you know, Bebo. There's a lot of good examples they, out they there. They sold it for $800 million and shut it down six months after, I think. Yeah, sometimes that can happen, right? So um, you bought it back? I bought it back, yeah. For nothing? Uh, you know, no, we put... We, How much? We spent, we, I can't disclose the number. I really can't. But, but nothing? But it was millions. No, we, we spent real money on it. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't and, free. And, and now? And now it's, you know, we now have millions and millions and millions of users. And it's two years later, and my team is jamming. Um, we just raised a big round of financing led by Brad Feld at Foundry How much Group. did you raise? It was $11 million. Um, Congratulations. So, thank you. And we have all that cash and more still on our balance sheet, and we're growing. And our engagement is getting uh, to be really solid. And I What's, love where are you going with direction. this? Where are you going with? Well, I think when we bought it back, the any, thing any I, user here of about.me? <clears throat> How many have it about that? Thank uh, you. you. Can you can win the others? So, Thank so, you. so, so can you tell the others who don't use it yet why they should? Well, I think everybody needs to have a homepage. I think if you think you don't have a web presence or need a web presence, you're fooling yourself because it's called Google, right? That's what people do. They take your name, they put it up in Google, and then Google will dictate what they learn about you. I think you should take control of that. Um, you should own your own story. And so, is it, is it, uh, can I interrupt you? Yeah, you can interrupt me anytime. It, is it not like a little passé? Because uh, we had Fiji, the head of Facebook video, and I'm sure you connect with video, Kevin, because you did a ton of video, yeah. and you can Google it. It's all in Facebook. The discovery only happens in Facebook. Uh, all that content is not available in Google at all. And, and so there is no, the identity there is only controlled by Facebook, right? Yeah, I think, I think Kevin and I were talking earlier that there's a lot of categories, maybe even watches fall into this, um, that, you know, the, for some reason, the web just kind of moved beyond, right? Um, and, you know, for us, I look at really three basic things that we've done this past year. One is email signature. You know, why hasn't somebody developed a product that you put a little, you know, thumbnail link um, to a page about you in your email signature? So we did that, you know, so we have about.me links now. Um, the second is resume. When's the last time somebody really innovated on the resume, 
right? That's and really right. tethered it to your identity. Because if you're a millennial or a college student or an artist or a photographer or a caterer, you know, a traditional resume probably doesn't take advantage of your core asset, which is you. But isn't that LinkedIn? Right? I don't find that to be LinkedIn. LinkedIn is not no. your resume? I think LinkedIn's an amazing product, but I think it's more for the classical kind of business person. Right, um, and I think our product, well, I do. I, I love it. I, I think our product works well for a, a broader set of people. Um, and then the third thing is um, we just innovated on uh, business cards, and we just created a digital. Paper. Yeah, well, we You're actually created paper? a digital business card, right, where, you know, the time, it kind of blows me away that we're sitting here, you know, 15 years into kind of the, the real consumer web, and nobody has built a digital business card, so we did it. You know, there's all kinds of categories like this that need invention. If you, if you agree, let's use some of the time we have left, which is not much on your predictions for 2015. So, oh. Kevin, can you get your crystal ball? What is, should I throw things at you? Bitcoin. Bitcoin, uh, okay, Bitcoin for me, um, it's, it's going to take a while to cross over to mainstream. I think that anytime you have a weird hash address like that, that's not something that my mother is ever going to know how to use. Um, the tools are getting better, but uh, what's interesting there is like kind of like the side chain stuff that's going on. So the idea of a completely uh, decentralized, uh, you know, anonymous applications built around a blockchain, I think is pretty interesting. But Bitcoin itself, I'm you're I'm not investing. Oh, on. Not investing there. Not not now. No. What are you investing in? Uh, you know, I think that things are extremely overvalued right now, so it's very opportunistic for me. I'm to not, build. Yeah, I'm, I'm building right now, and so it's, great, it's a great time to raise funding. But uh, on the investment side, um, you know... Yeah, I, what is the Series A right now, like classic or even seed? It's like 10, 15? 10, 10, but 7 to 10. 7 to 10 million dollars if you're not a well-known entrepreneur. Well, a couple things are happening, If you're a right? beginner with five the, slides, the you get 10 million, right? Valuations yeah. are going up, but also the amount of capital being raised is also going up. Right, so entrepreneurs are actually, you know, they're they're creating a longer runway, which I think they need to. I think it's smart. Yeah, I agree with that as I well. Think, I'd I rather have them raise more money up front than get into this really awkward spot where they raise a half a million, they go eight months, they run out of capital, they don't have anything to show for it. Now that they can't raise another round of funding, I'd rather have them take at least 18 months of runway, keep the team really small, and just like rapidly iterate. Tony, where do you invest in? Um, I like, you know, you, you know I kind of like weird stuff, right? I mean, at this stage. Weird stuff. Weird, yeah. I mean, you know, think about the last investments I've been a, I've been a part of. You know, Blue Bottle Coffee has nothing to yeah, do with technology. Yeah, you're making coffee. And that's, that's becoming a mega brand and I think is a billion dollar plus type company. You think? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Starting like, with one coffee shop in San Francisco. Uh, no, 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 no. We have like 20. When, when it started. We have 20 shops now, but it was wow. just one, yes. You're right. We're now opening up in Tokyo. Would you uh, sell it to Starbucks and buy it back again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please yeah. don't sell it to Starbucks. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Listen, it's not my decision, but um, I, I don't think that's my motive. Okay, my, so coffee? <laughs> yeah, we're into um, consumer drones, right, with 3D robotics. You know, Fitbit, when we did Fitbit, was a weird thing. MakerBot, the first 3D printer, that awesome. was such a weird thing that was like offbeat. Even WordPress, when we did it, you know, didn't, you know, it was like, what is that, right? And so, I like stuff that, to me, is um, I'm more interested and excited about the founder, right? And do I think the founder has the capacity to be a founder of a movement? Yep. Somebody like Kevin. Philip Rosedale, we invested in High Fidelity. He has the capacity or does already own that capacity to be somebody who can create a movement and a community around their products. Yeah, and for me, you know, I, I do a lot of consumer internet investing, so I'm seeing a lot of, you know, sadly, we see a lot of Me Too ideas. So anytime, you know, a company hits a new, you know, $100 million, billion dollar valuation, you see a ton of clones pop up. And sometimes clones can be a good thing, especially if they're in a different space, you know, like enterprise versus consumer. But I feel that, you know, this one, one piece of criteria that actually Peter Thiel first mentioned that kind of distilled what I was thinking down into a sentence was that it has to be an order of magnitude better than anything else that's already out there for consumers to make the switch. So that's like one thing that I always look at is like, this can be a small little incremental like improvement and I'm not interested. If it's a 10x or greater improvement, then that's something that's really exciting. And, and Kevin just uh, comes to my mind. Uh, when you think about Elon Musk, 
But by the way, it was here last year, but not on stage. We had dinner. Amazing. It was so, so, so frustrating. I tried to sh shut down an airport to have him stay, but he could not. But anyway, it is changing the world, right? Arguably, on the, like different spaces and like, electric cars and space. Uh, are you not like inspired to try something like completely crazy like this? You say weird. You say I like to iterate with small apps, which is great. But why don't you? I think you can start really small and own that one category. Have you, did you read Zero to One from Peter Thiel? Yep, he talks part. about when he started PayPal, he went just after the power sellers, and he owned that one particular category. Uh -huh. And then, then from there, they went and spread out. And I think that that's a, a sound piece of advice, like going after a small niche. Like for me, luxury watches sounds really boring, right? But like if you think about the, the greater luxury as like a, this big holistic like entity, it's a much bigger space than you would think. So it's, uh, you and know, I saw starting... you pitching Delphine Arnaud on, uh, on this idea, so yeah. I, I think starting small is smart and just owning it. Tony, one last word? I, you know. It's very fast, I know, but you're, you're here. We can talk to you, right? You're here. You, you, we're here. Of course, here. we're here. You're here. Absolutely. And, we, you know, people can come and I ask swear you to God, it. we're not holograms. We are real. <laughs> Boom. He'll that sign hurt. you up for an about.me page. Come up to him, he'll have his laptop later out, and I, I'll make you an about.me page. Are you doing our uh, Meet the Expert? Do you, do you, you, can we you know, talk to you? How, how, do, yeah. how do we meet you at the web? At Kevin Rose? You just at go, Tony Conrad? You just go to my about.me page and email me about directly me from there. About.me Tony? <laughs> about.me slash Tony Conrad. That's a good, that's a good, uh, the good idea. How Absolutely. do you not own slash Tony? You have slash Tony I mean, Conrad? Of course, but everybody should own their whole name. Okay. That's the point, right? I don't Fair represent enough. all the Tonys in the world. That's a good point. Fair enough. Kind of. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm so sorry we're uh, out of time. Oh. I would, I would keep going, like uh, talking to Are you. Are we gonna kiss on the way out? I never. You know. want to kiss? We yeah. can kiss. Sure, sure. Let's kiss on the way out. Right. Be careful with the microphone. Three or two. Kiss, 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 Three. Kiss, 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 kiss. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> They're saying two. Oh, you want to kiss too? I want mine too, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, and you're hairy, right? That's right. So, uh, oh, Tim. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, brother. Kuma. I'm not sure my, my microphone works still. Thank you.